Hello, I am Mr. Jellibird, also known on the internet as Duckford or King Duckford. Today we are going to make a demonstration video on the concept of depth of penetration to vitals in relation to stopping an attacker and also how this uh, factors in to gel tests, specifically 10% ordnance gel. This is my assistant, Mr. Barbo, and he will be your attacker today, and we will use him as our um, moving dummy. Mr. Barbo is 5'11 and 180 pounds. He may not be uh, uh, Andre the Giant or Shaquille O'Neal or the worst case scenario for penetration, but he is certainly not one of the worst. As we've painted a general description of where Mr. Barbo's heart would be as he is going to be the simulated attacker, we can also discuss other major vitals, obviously um, the skull case, the spine which runs down the entire length of the body, the heart and aorta, of course, the major blood-bearing vessels, but also along the length of the spine is also the descending aorta and vena cava. Also major veins with that can uh, bleed greatly and reduce blood pressure and actually cause an, an attack, a stoppage of attack. Also that can be considered would be the liver and the kidneys and the renal arteries. The lungs are certainly potentially important, but not always an excellent way of immediately stopping an attack. <clears throat> now, we'll discuss the nature of optimal shot uh, angle and depth to the major organs. In this attack pose, we see an attacker coming at us with the perfect angle for uh, the optimum angle for shot. Or in a demonstration like this where Mr. Barbo is holding an assault rifle over his head. Both of these shots against an attacker in this position would be considered optimal angle and depth of penetration. In this optimal angle of shot, let's see how far it takes for uh, a bullet in uh, in a, this condition to reach the major vitals. Now we can go in a straight shot through the heart would be about say give and take on this kind of person about five inches. To get to the spine it would take about ten inches of penetration to hit and punch through it. To get to other organs lower down in the abdomen about six inches. All of this in optimal conditions and angles. In order to achieve the perfect straight flat shot, to achieve maximum, uh, to get the perfect angle for optimum penetration, we would uh, have to have the, the firearm not only on the same exact level as the organ that we're going to theoretically hit, but uh, the gun has to be, can't be canted up or down. It has to be at the same level and at the correct angle. Even if we simply change where the gun is pointing, we change the depth because of angle. And we'll get a more, uh, a deeper shot to get to the vitals. Same thing is, if the gun has to be pointing at a heart, and if the shooter is at a different height than what the organ is at, the gun will have to be pointed at an angle and the bullet will strike at an angle, increasing depth to vital. Even though at optimal, we can about uh, expect to get to his heart in about five and a half inches at the perfect angle, straight through, as we change the depth, we slowly begin to change the depth, uh, <coughs> as we change angle, the depth of penetration to reach the organ changes. If we have to shoot at a very high angle, it increases to about six and a half inches. As we 
change if we have to take a low shot for some reason it can get all the way up to say ten and a half, eleven and in the most extreme cases even more. To reach the spine which is further back from a shot from the front we have to even get much deeper and therefore hitting many important vitals depending on uh, where the shot placement is let's say we're going to shoot for the liver and uh, we're at a higher angle now we're going to be reaching uh, a much different depth of penetration to the vital and to reach the descending vena cava and the descending aorta again a much uh, deeper shot may have to uh, be made so you may say well in what situation might these different shot angles present themselves aren't I always going to be attacking someone coming at me directly uh, I'm going to be standing they're going to be standing well perhaps not consider the different positions that uh, a police officer or a civilian might find themselves in they may indeed find themselves at a position where they will be shooting standing up in their normal shooting position however um, some situations may demand you shoot from the hip some situations you may be leaning down to make yourself a smaller target in some situations you may even get to one knee and in other situations you might even get knocked to the ground you may even have to shoot someone who's standing over you depending on the nature of the attack and the defense other scenarios could be driving in your automobile or in some situations shooting over various forms of cover. The attacker may not always present his chest openly to you and from the correct angle as well he may put his arms closer to his chest which may interfere with the shot he may also an unarmed or a knife wielder or someone without a firearm may also try to bull rush you changing the angle of his body and perhaps putting his arms in front of his vitals in a shooting situation he may not always present his chest flatly to you he may turn to one side and shoot at you from a smaller profile and he may even be running and jumping and shooting over his shoulder you are probably trained in how to move off the X and criminals if you watch many shootings or have been in a real shooting may realize criminals also get off the X and move and don't simply uh, always provide a static perfect angled target. Say in the situation of a side shot where you may have to shoot an attacker from this angle rather than this angle. In this scenario we'd have to shoot approximately about eleven and a half inches into Mr. Barbo to hit his heart. If Mr. Barbo has his arm down in the way of the path of the bullet we can approximate the depth of penetration to hit the vital to be about 14 and a half inches. Now, even if it stops short, it may hit a lung, but in a life or death scenario where you have to stop an attack, what's better than one shot through one lung is one shot through both lungs and a heart. The liver in this shot may be a relatively easy target to hit, but from the other side with the arm down and closed in we still may have to shoot say 12 inches in. Let's also consider that angle 
also plays a role in where the shooter is shooting from. With the arm against the trunk, let's say you are in a position to shoot from a lower angle. Now, to strike the heart, you may have to reach 15 and a half inches or so. All of these are approximates. All of these are to simply give a general idea. If you have to shoot through the shoulder, 12 and a half. Or if you are on the ground and someone's shooting back at you, you may find that the depth of penetration to the heart may be 18 inch. However, in some of these scenarios, you will hit other major blood bearing organs and vessels. In the straight on shooting angle, so called the perfect angle, how may the limbs factor into, a, to, into the penetration necessary to reach vital organs? Depending on the angle of the shooter and also the arms of the shooter, this can vary greatly. In this scenario, we may actually uh, come out on top considering angles because we may be at a lower stance and shoot underneath the limbs and find ourselves back at a nice straight angle. However, depending on how the bad guy, the attacker, is holding his gun or his arms, the depth of penetration to reach the <coughs> vitals may change greatly. Depending on where we hit his arm, we may have to shoot through several inches of arm muscle. If we say hit him here, we may have to shoot through several inches, depending on how the angle goes, to get to the heart. The attacker, you may have to shoot him at a various uh, at many different angles depending on his stance and your stance. All of them changing the angle, the trajectory, the way the bullet has to hit, and how much flesh has to be penetrated to reach the blood bearing organs. How he carries his gun, if he carries a gun, how he attacks you, all matter. His height, his stance, your height, your stance, and everything you do. Remember that a fight is 360 degrees. Remember that a fight has no rules and that the attacker is not always presenting the best angle of shot. So remember, shots may be as simple and easy as punching five and a half or six inches into a heart or if you're on the ground facing someone trying to stomp you to death it could be as deep as, say, 15 and a half inches, or hitting the spine at, say, 23 inches. From a side shot, you may get lucky enough to try to hit the heart from the side at, say, 10 and a half inches, or to maybe strike the vulnerable liver at a mere four, four and a half. Or it may be as difficult as someone who is shooting at you from a certain angle to punch through, say, as much as 19 inches to get to the heart. So, in conclusion, the peace officer or civilian concealed carry may find himself in a wide variety of situations, sometimes requiring a much deeper shot to reach vital organs to stop the attack. There's a virtual endless, almost infinite uh, amount of scenarios, angles you can find yourself in. And so we can demonstrate quite easily today uh, on the, the concept of depth of penetration to vitals why when it comes to the IWBA format to the FBI with their 10% uh, gel tests why 12 to 18 inches seems to be a per, about the best. Um, many people cite the fact that in a perfect angle, in the perfect exact shot, perhaps five inches, five and a half, six is deep enough. But I believe this video should show you that depending on the attack and your position, you may find that you have to punch much deeper to end the attack. 
In another video, we'll discuss the various uh, differences between ordnance gel and human flesh and how that also factors in to the computations used when uh, with <coughs> ordnance gel.